So good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for attending today's session. Uh, today, we are very, very happy to have uh, BGS School of Architecture and Planning, one of uh, one of the really good schools in Karnataka, and um, we are happy to have an entire team here today. Uh, Hello, hey all. Sorry, I uh, there was a, uh, a small error, but yes. Um, so we have uh, Doctor Doctor Ajay Chandran, who's the dean of BGS School of Architecture. We have uh, uh, Professor C T Manjunath, who's the H O D of the BIAC program. We have Associate Professors Indu Satyendra, Sana Praveen, Tejas Kare. Priyanka Kulkarni and Grishma Madam who are here today. And we have a fantastic uh, team of uh, 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 representing the school here. And we are very happy to have all of you all participating today. So uh, please feel free to send in your questions. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. All right, and I'll just briefly tell you what is going to be uh, happening in today's session. So uh, first, we will definitely cover the philosophy of the head of the institute, which I think is a very, very important uh, part of every architecture school. We'll be talking about the unique features of the school, the faculty, the general scores, ranks, and board percentage required the course fees, hostel facilities, and other expenses, uh, your unique points of the institute, whatever you need to know, this is your time to ask. Apart from this presentation, we definitely have a Q&A session, so you all can ask your questions. And in between, at various intervals during this uh, presentation, we will have five new NATA 2020 uh, questions that are going to be discussed today. And uh, look out for the next webinar tomorrow, which is a school talking about interior architecture. But more importantly, um, please like this webinar. There's a like button, which you need to click. Uh, I would also like you to subscribe to the DQ Labs channel because uh, that's you'll be updated every time we have a webinar. And uh, also, send in your questions. So here at the bottom, there's a small little option for you to send in your questions. Please do that, all right? Now the NATA 2020 new pattern, we are, uh, we are asking five questions a day during every eMeet webinar. So please look out for that. Um, but if you want all the questions, you can log on to DQ Edge. Uh, it has an entire section dedicated to the NATA 2020 new pattern. Part A, which is for 125 marks. Um, and there are 12 free sample questions that you can take. Uh, there's another set of questions which you can share with your friends. And when you share with your friends, you will get access to that for free. So all the explanations to these questions, what we're discussing, discussing here, you will get free if you share this with your friends. Uh, we also have five not one questions which are going to be released from August 1st onwards. And uh, and uh, each set of, from August 1st, we're gonna release 25 questions every day. And the discussion of those questions is gonna happen the next next day, all right? So uh, please participate in that so that you can, uh, that'll be helpful to you. Right, so I have stopped sharing my screen and my part of the presentation. Over to you, Professor Ajay Chandran. Good evening, all. It's a great privilege uh, to interact with each one of you. I take this opportunity to, first of all, to thank the able team of Design Quotient Labs, DQ Labs, headed by Mr. Umesh Kumar, sir, Mr. Sean, sir, Mr. Dion, sir. Uh, they have been giving good students into the field of architecture, and BGSAP also have some of their good students who are pursuing architecture from the last five years. This will be a very brief presentation regarding 
the overview of our school, the way we uh, accomplish uh, teaching learning process at BGSF, uh, why BGSF, what are the unique aspects which we are pursuing from the last five years. So a whole lot of things what we were accomplishing or we were in the process of the journey of architecture education in the last five years. Next slide. Next slide. As we are aware, we are part of the BGS group of institutions. In short, Sri Adi Chinchinigri Shikshna Trust, ably guided by philanthropists, ably guided by uh, spiritual leaders. Uh, the, as the BGS name goes, it is associated with his divine soul, Sri 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 Dr. Balakangatranatha Mahaswamiji. Our president, His Holiness, Jagat Guru Sri Sri Dr. Nirmalanta Nata Mahaswamiji. He is an IATN, a master's uh, from IIT uh, Chennai, structural specialist, a very close association with architecture. We are ably guided by our Reverend Sri 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 Dr. Prakash Nath Swamiji, who is a uh, trained pilot from the US. So as you are aware, all our founders, all our guiding lights, all our management, um, gurus are all heading various institutions and doing this kind of service oriented uh, educational scenario in Karnataka and all over the globe right from 1973 onwards. We have a legacy. We have 500 plus institutions, five engineering college, two medical college, two architecture schools, uh, one called as VGS School of Architecture and Planning and another SJB School of Architecture and Planning. Yeah, next slide, please. This is our pride, which will be accomplished in next one and a half years to two years. We have an established uh, school which has one lakh square feet already with us, with all the facilities. We started UG since 2015. We have started PhD program approved by the VTU from June 2020, and we are soon going to start a master's program from the next year. We wanted to come, we waited for the first batch to complete to take on with master's program. So next year, with a pause of one year, we will be starting the master's program. So all the three aspects of architecture education, the UG, the PG and PhD, for a change, we started with PhD first. And next year, we will be, um, God willing, we will be starting the PG program in advanced design. And the building which we are showcasing is a green building, proposed green building, which will be accomplished in next one and a half years. Right now, we have one lakh square feet, um, um, uh, lush green campus amidst a uh, lush green campus. And we have all the facilities. In spite of that, we are looking at a new building. Yes. In this five years of journey, we completed admin block, new block. We completed a high-end hostel for architecture. And our campus is almost 19 years old. We started with first international school campus in South Bangalore. To know the landmark, it is almost five to seven kilometers from RV School of Architecture and almost five to seven kilometers from SJB School of Architecture, which is again part of our own management. The vision what we have for the school and what we totally believe in it is go green. Global in outlook, local in context. We look at uh, the core strength of which we have been seeing in this uh, uh, holy land. Uh, generations and generations. So we are looking at uh, looking at that unique strength which our uh, country, our soil uh, talks about. Our strength is the set of faculty members uh, who are with us. We have 15 professors who are more than 25 years experienced, five associate professors and a whole lot of 32 odd um, assistant professors. Why we are stressing on that, this is a team. And all the things what we do, we share it in social media from the day one. That is a level of transparency. We have all the online platform right from the day one. Uh, we are in um, uh, almost all the social media platforms. 
the good works are shared, the activities are shared. We want to have that 360 degree transparency in what we do. We have implemented uh, online platforms uh, every day, all the nodes, all the works, all the communications are already implemented online. And uh, whatever we share, what we do with the students, the parents have the access to it. So it's a, a totally well-informed academic process at uh, BGSF. And if you look at the team, the team has the I, Indian Institute of Architects chairman with us, uh, Indian Institute of Interior Design as national president with us. So all, all kind of versatile professionals, each one of the, we can spend time and hours uh, discussing about what each one of the faculty members do. So what I can say in short is leadership of today trains the leadership of tomorrow. We are here in demonstrating what people do in their profession. All of our professionals are part of the industry. And in not only just industry, they are part of, uh, I would say, um, some of them are part of successful practice. Some of them are part of successful research publication. Some of them have unique strength, like uh, well-celebrated artists. Some of them are known for their walkthrough. So very, very varied, unique strength. We invite these kind of talents. Uh, most of them are by invitation. They are with us. And five years, so good. So far, so good. And uh, we are uh, uh, posed to take on with the same team. So we believe totally on this human resource. We are second none uh, to none in terms of infrastructure. So in terms of the strength of faculty members, we have been showcasing the entire team. So we have, uh, most of the parents and students, if you have done the homework properly, you will know. 50 plus faculty under the roof and pursuing architecture education means um, it's a quality environment out here. Next slide, please. We are looking at newness. We are looking at demonstration. We are looking at innovation. Uh, we are looking at visual language and critical thinking. So all, all the time we are looking at intense uh, juries, intense hand-holding. Most of the, I would say, all the activities are guru-led and the studios are almost like 24 by seven kind of studios. Our hostels are just a five minutes walk, uh, walking distance from um, the studios. Studios are nothing but, uh, most of you are familiar with architecture, uh, vocabulary and uh, space, uh, which, uh, which is congenial for architecture education. So it's a it's an all round school of thought. Uh, leadership means not just education. Leadership means culture, sports, mm -hmm. uh, 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 social uh, activities. Um, uh, highly active school students uh, uh, part of national uh, NASA National Association of Students of Architecture. Students participation participating in road track. Whole lot of activities. The strength is again, I'm specifying faculty facilities uh, to name a few. We have a cricket ground, which is approved by Karnataka Cricket Academy, KCA. Uh, we have uh, a football ground, we have a swimming pool, we have horse uh, riding paddock. You name it, we have a 300 acres, lush green campus, very silent. That is the reason we chose this campus where it's a world by itself, you, know? you are working. You are sketching, you, are, you just see the seven hall golf course next to you. Sub, well supported by the gurus who are very passionate. That is our strength. And our final priority or our priority for shaping the future leaders, are they are entrepreneurs. Architecture is a brand by itself. Everybody aspires to do something of their, everybody has a story to tell and we are believing in that. We are here to shape the way the students wish to shape their future. We are assisting, we are hand-holding, we are shaping their dreams. And so we are enablers, we are motivators, we are, uh, I would say, facilitators, that's all. Next slide, please. I would request the DQ Lab uh, team to take over. Yes, you will have some exciting. over to Meghna. Meghna will take over from here. Hi, uh, good evening, guys. So the first question for uh, today, uh, I'll just read it out. It's based on a sense of perspective drawing. You need to match the following. Uh, 
you have four images given and the options are followed on the right side the time starts now please send in your responses in the live chat time up the correct answer is option c option c is the right answer like dion already mentioned you will find the explanation for these questions on edge.dklabs.in yes sir you can so you can continue yeah i would request uh, our beloved uh, uh, ct manj professor ct manjunath sir who happens to be our hod undergraduate study very senior academician to take on thank you sir thanks a lot <clears throat> well um, very important uh, most of the academic institutes perhaps because of the pandemic and because of the crisis they must have turned towards the digital but bgs sap was always in the forefront as far as the digital world was concerned and uh, the focus the main aim of why we have already all, always accepted and adopted a digital world is for effective communication with uh, the parents with the students and the faculty and transparency transparency of our academic process and also the accountability of the academic process itself so this is the core and uh, all these are possible because of a very strong platform online platform that we have that is campus you know one message bgs sap microsoft office 360 portal and all our online classes all our online lectures are uh, based on this online platform microsoft teams and it is a very effective platform as far as we have tried all these months next slide well what are those what are the conveniences what are those that we have what is that is better when we adopt a digital technology one is it starts with the student pre admission admission process management everything every information student fee management and alerts courses branches subjects and department management timetable student attendance management that means in other words the student a parent will always be communicated as to Well, whether the his, his, their ward daughter or son has attended the class or not, uh, and uh, even examination time, if there is any internal marking, all of this will be immediately communicated to the parents, so that the parents will know exactly whether how their their wards are performing in the institute. At the same time, all the lectures, all those that we share in the academics, are uploaded in this portal. and uh, the access for the students and parents both of them can go through that and also they can get into the idea of accountability to what extent we our earnestness our intensity of academics uh, is very apparent then comes the examination results and all of that that is <clears throat> that comes to the evaluation and marking system then email and sms communication for effective communication any immediate communications any immediate uh, uh, sharing of messages will always be through email and sms uh, and library management student can access all the books we have more than 2000 e publications in our library which are and the books are all barcoded for the convenience of the students and uh, definitely exhaustive reports with the statistics and graphs and faculty module student and parent module transport management is another thing facility student and faculty performance assessment so all of this anything that you want a parent a student needs as far as our academic process is concerned it's already always available in our digital platform and this is the sample of our portal if you can see the slide on the left hand side it gives the complete academic schedule of that particular semester uh, month wise date wise and day wise uh, and uh, um, uh, it is very complete 
for the parents on the students as well and on the right hand side if you can see it is a sample of uh, the mcq that we conduct for the student to update themselves with the latest information the knowledge in that particular discipline and uh, we always conduct more than three opportunities for students to log in and evaluate themselves and test their knowledge in this mcq system next slide well again here if you can see the slide on the top those are the teams that we form every subject will have a team and of course we do maintain uh, uh, the student uh, and the teacher ratio very well uh, especially in design when it comes to it, it is only one is to five that means for five students it's one 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 teacher for five students and uh, it is very intense discussion one to discussion the uh, focus on each student will be very enormous and uh, the students always will very comfortable with that kind of one to one uh, uh, discussion hand holding so you can see the various teams that are there in the portal and uh, the other two sides are examples of online lecture that we share uh, online classes that these are the glimpses of that and very well uh, structured very well explained and very picturesque in fact so no more more number of uh, our uh, a person a student will not get carried away only the theory we see it's so picturesque and illustrated and uh, this is uh, the method that we use in the online classes sir i request uh, dean to take over yeah so in short, what we are saying is an institution which has matured uh, five years online, online-based uh, uh, delivery mechanism. And as you are aware, we have 52 faculty with varied experience and varied background, most of them successfully running their own practice. In a private university system, which is under the VTU, we can allow faculty to practice. So what the message, what I'm trying to say here, every faculty over here persuades uh, their profession, parallel. So there's no faculty as such faculty alone in BGSAP. Everybody are professionals. They share their conviction with the students. So demonstration is real time uh, scenarios. So we have the high end CAT lab. Uh, 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 what we are trying to say here is the CAT lab facilities are much beyond the best of the best architects office. The kind of systems what we have adopted for example, the walkthrough systems which are kept in our labs are, are require only five to 10 minutes for a high level render. Even for a TC student, they wish to be in our lab to get their rendering done because our missions, most of the, uh, the best of the best offices will not have such a infra digital infrastructure with them. I'm talking about the rendering systems, almost 10 systems kept only for rendering. These are the studios, what you see towards your left side. These studios are uh, nothing less uh, of an architect's office, a good architect's office work table module is given to it. This is student, we have um, uh, studios, uh, we have classrooms for discussions with uh, um, uh, engineering experts. We have a lot of structures, uh, structure related subjects. We have engineering related subjects for that we prefer the classrooms. We can integrate these two things in the studio, but we have separate areas called as classrooms. And these are uh, glimpses of uh, the picture what, what you see the student having the jury is taken up by national IID president, uh, the previous national IID president um, uh, who is taking the jury. He is our design chair at uh, PGSM, architect Nitin Solapurkar, sir. The all the studios are having Wi-Fi. We have almost 170 Mbps Wi-Fi. It's a Wi-Fi campus. Uh, we keep the studios open almost 24 bar seven. But literally by two o'clock, uh, every studios are managed by security guards, CCTV. So the digital surveillance system, uh, and we have our own. It, it is a fort by itself. Uh, right from entry to exit, everything is monitored. Um, we maintain the school uh, like a nursery school because we believe in architecture education requires a lot of discipline. Art architecture requires a discipline. So accountability is the key. 
uh, you get to see all the facilities. Um, uh, students are trained not only in profession, we, we, we uh, request them, require them to be active, strong mind, um, physically fit. So we, we maintained, as I have all, all already mentioned to you, uh, we are a spiritual organization led institution. So discipline is a key. And the overall uh, development of the student is the most important aspect which we focus. We want them to be happy individuals, want to be um, um, highly, uh, uh, what you call, um, responsible individuals, good citizens. That we, we go beyond the academics. We are looking at overall spiritual level of confinement in that space and, and developing as a responsible uh, individual. Right. A whole lot of activities, right, from singing to participation in all kinds of fest, a BGS would serve is quite a popular um, aspect. And the unique uh, Krida hosted by BGS, SAP. Uh, in the South India, if you look at, if you Google it, any of these aspects, you Google it, you will get to hear from the students. We are more than willing to share our students' data bank with you. If you want to meet uh, uh, any of our students or parents to, at least uh, during the pandemic, if you want to interact with them, uh, we believe in that transparency. Our, um, our uh, torch bearers are our students. So a whole lot of student activities and their details can be shared. Full equipped lab, uh, lab and full equipped library. I would say um, exhaustive library, even a 30 year old institution will not have that kind of a exhaustive library, which we can boast of. Our faculty prescribe the books, they identify, we, we keep updating it. And um, I, I can say with the latest uh, um, um, feedback, which we get from faculty, the faculty goes through the books intense, uh, but students prefer the digital medium, but still we keep both like our uh, Professor C.T. Manjunath sir has already mentioned, we have digit, exhaustive digital uh, li library aspect as well as uh, hard copy library, but we believe strongly that the hard copy is any day better when it comes to the books, yes. Right, next slide please. Whole lot of uh, exciting questions before, we, right. I will request the DQ labs to take off. So guys, the second question for today, again, a match the following question regarding uh, visual interpretation. So I'll read out the option. Option A, uh, rotational symmetry. B is glide reflection. C, transla uh, translational repetition. Uh, D, tile fractals. E, figure and ground. Please match A, B, C, D, E with one, two, three, four, five. The options are on the right side. Your time starts now. answer is option D is the right answer. You'll find resources related to what each type of uh, rotational symmetry or figure and ground, all these concepts on DQH. Please do log in and check out for further detailed explanations. And now I'd request uh, Professor Sana, Madam, um, to take on. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm architect Sana Parveen and uh, working here in BJSF from almost two years. And uh, I'm also the academic coordinator of first year. So this academic coordinatorship is there for each and every semester and batch. It's just not for first year. And the role for academic coordinator is very defined and specific. Uh, so uh, before, in, uh, as I'm already aware, okay, many of you are uh, aware about the fact of what is architecture, uh, but what we uh, uh, produce or what our idea in BGS SAP, I would like to uh, just uh, give everyone a brief about it. Uh, next slide, sir, please. 
yeah what bj sap can offer you so here uh, in next slide i will tell ke how uh, we always look our each and every semester and batch in which way so like here uh, we never go to uh, like that ke what btu or any curriculum or courses is uh, is coming up uh, but what we see in each and every year is like i mentioned here first year we we always give that opportunity to students or the new or the freshers to learn to unlearn and exploration the more you explore uh, the things the uniqueness the experiment uh, the more you will learn about what is all about a particular topic similarly in second year we see uh, we build the building of the basics and skill development after knowing you uh, and uh, after doing all the experiment in first year when we analyze ki okay this particular skill is is good enough in a particular student we not only teach the course uh, but we also go through that skill development process similarly in third year obviously when you are into third year your design thinking your basics are clear because of the first year and second year so we started teaching you the more about the alternatives methods like uh, in design also in construction similarly when you will reach to the fourth year here you will not only touch about the course but obviously the curriculum will give you that opportunity to talk and see the reality of the world which is there in terms of the professional training so that professional training is mandatory in fourth year in fourth year for a period of 6 months when you will obviously learn something from the college and from the out uh, uh, from the world then definitely the time came when you can show your passion about any particular topic because now you have the knowledge of both the worlds the academics and the world the world which is outside your college so fifth year is all about your passion it's all about showing your interest in the form of your thesis project so this is this is the way which we are following from the day one till the day you are graduating it so we are not only giving you that opportunity to learn about the course but definitely we are also looking that is skill we are also looking that passion so that you can improve more and you can do much much better things in your future so here uh, with next slide i will uh, very quickly brief about the some subjects uh, which definitely is there in the, in first semester so next slide please yeah so here as i uh, you already aware ki yes there are many subjects uh, in first semester similarly in second semesters so we'll quickly brief about the basic design architectural design the building construction the history of the architecture uh, uh, the computer application the role of the architectural graphics and obviously some more interesting topic which is there so for the basic design i would quickly request tejas sir to talk about the basic design tejas sir Uh, good evening, one and all. I'm uh, Tejas Karai, um, assistant professor at BGSSAP, and um, I handle uh, basic design. And uh, what you um, know as uh, basic design, what you see right now, is a basis of any design making skill. So you start with uh, learning ways of seeing. So you start to uh, see the world differently. So as a designer you uh, are open, uh, you are uh, exposed to a world um, which is of constant learning where you abstract and explore so and then there is always that is um, we we are keen about experiential learning so we believe in um, muscle memory or uh, teaches us uh, teaches us more than uh, engaging in books so basic design is all about um finding a way of expression so may it be through mediums through softwares or through a lot of model making uh, the mediums could be uh, starting with your pencil a basic graphite and we explore charcoal clay um plaster of paris sculpture model making so it's just a basic exposure to various aspects of you know you being an artist and uh, connecting to what you are going to be as an architect so this uh, subject is all about a bridge between an artist and an architect so uh, the subject is more like a workshop and studio based uh, learning and um, also you're going to uh, learn about uh, what is art and how is it uh, influencing the society what is the power of art 
and also the history of art and also uh, you would learn about art appreciation different ages of art and also the style of art and also um, basically it's just nothing but um, you're learning as a new language to express and explore design and develop a sense of in uh, inquisitiveness uh, towards exploring nature and learning design so this is my brief introduction about the subject i would uh, request um priyanka ma'am to take over with uh, architecture design sure um hi guys hi everyone i am priyanka kulkarni um i am a faculty of bjs sap so yes we are talking about the very much the core of your entire structuring program this is your the core of your whole course that you're going to see from first semester to your last semester and which you are going to carry forward throughout your life that is architectural design so you will notice like some of you perceive architecture design as an art you guys are creative you love sketching you have pens pencils you love colors coming onto your sheets yes some of you see it that way but some of you actually see it in a very practical perspective where you have lot of um, you know once you are walking on a street and you see a building and some day you're like okay i am going to make something like this which is going to require you to not just sketch things out but also bring it out practically so what architectural design actually does is it's going to bridge these two aspects of your life your creative aspect and your practical aspect so during this course that of you bridging and to be able to understand this terminology that is architecture design you will have several subjects that revolve around this core may it be basic design that you already got a brief about you will have um, uh, materials of building construction you will have computer applications you will have history of architecture so each subject like this has an importance in developing your entire architectural design skill because what you are actually trying to achieve is a mind of an architect you are trying to achieve a thought flow or rather a way of perceiving things which you will learn only in architecture probably a building that you are seeing today which is just a structure where you see a rectangle standing on a surface but this further you will start noticing once you become an architect or you are in the journey of architecture you will start bringing up concepts like symmetry proportion scale like even a small human being standing in front of it makes so much difference so all these tiny concepts that you will start learning in your first semester you will start imbibing them and coming you will start elaborating it even more as in when you go to every semester so your entire purpose when you see that when you're going into the competitive world will be to bring about this creative aspect where you're trying to design the space trying to create a space where you're making it into a place so these small terminologies actually make a big difference when you come through the five years so here you're noticing some of the works done by our first semester students so the next slide you will notice um so just go to the next slide please yes so this is um an output by a, a fourth year student so you will see how things are revolving around tiny aspects so here the person has used computer application to bring about the same thought flow that the person had in the first semester so coming across lot of fields and of course we are here with you to guide you in all aspects bring out that creative mind of yours and all we are going to do is channel it correctly and help and make sure you achieve that architecture mind which is going to make you into an architect so that you can build these large uh, skyscrapers that you are seeing over here and come come out as an individual of of your dream so that's what we are exactly going to do in architecture design uh, moving forward will be another course that you will see which will also help strengthen architecture design which um, so you can just go ahead Yeah, I request Sana Ma'am to take over and tell you about the throw some light on the practical aspect of this course. Uh, thank you, Priyanka Ma'am. Uh, here, the second uh, uh, subject is which is called as uh, materials and uh, methods of methods of building construction. 
it's very important subjects when you are learning about the basic design and architectural design but you don't know how to construct it so that importance of construction is very important if i will give you one very simple example is just like that one subject okay, where you are having a ticket of a building uh, but you are not entering it or you want to enter into the building but you don't have a ticket so everything is going to be on a piece of paper if you don't know how to construct it what material would be like uh, for any particular elements whether it is a staircase whether it is a column what color what texture how you are going to construct it what uh, uh, labor uh, uh, mason are going to do it each and every parameter uh, we always talk even starting from the first semester till your final year and yes definitely we do the hands on workshop also conducted by the faculty or guided by the faculty we also do the site visit because if reality if you are not going to see that product you you are not going to see that construction techniques then maybe that clarity of that topic is a bit difficult for a person who is just in first semester so these are the some uh, work of the second semester uh, uh, here usually we do work on a a1 size sheet but considering pandemic and all definitely we are here to take care about the kids with all those parameters so we reduce the scale of the project but we never reduce the quality of the assignment as you can see is the project work of second semester students it's not we have given them you have to do this they designed all the things yes references was there for a, like our ppt Uh, or a presentation or any question hour session or all those interactive session but all these things were designed by the students they have given the viva and all those things here on the right hand side you will see uh, these are the images of first semester where they have done a hands on workshop based on the bricks how to mix the material how to place the bricks how you are going to cut the bricks everything was done under the guidance of the faculty so yes building construction is very important to learn otherwise whatever you are designing or whatever you are having in your mind it's going to be on a piece of paper so that's the beauty of the construction so over to the second uh, or a third subject okay sorry before subject here is another question by uh, dq hmm. so the third question for today uh it's related to shadows and visualizing so which of these correctly shows the shadow cast by the top pedestal of a circular column the time starts now time up the correct answer is option a option a is the right answer yes i'm over to you yeah the other subject which is history of architecture as i mentioned about the uh, building construction the beauty of the construction like if you don't know the construction then it's going to be on a piece of paper similarly the beauty of history i will request architect indu satyendra ma'am to talk about the history and uh, uh, yes indu ma'am uh good evening everyone my name is architect indu i am an associate professor i've been with uh, bjsf for the past 4 years history i know that word scares a lot of you out there because you've just come out of school after learning so much history um and uh, the only thing i can say is it's not scary we promise to make it a very very fun experience for anybody who comes to us um so history is something that i really love and i we try to you know understanding history of architecture um is something um it, it's something so in it, it a very big part of what modern day architecture is and um you know you you all must have learned so much of history you must have learned about the Har harappan civilization you must have learned about the pyramids of giza but essentially all of this all of this what we're doing now all of this what you aspire to be in terms of uh, architects is all for one basic basic idea and that is for shelter 
so the startings of history let it be you know when people started living in caves or when they started digging things out of the ground to start living in the ground or when they started building cities along big rivers like the nile um to establish communities there all of this that one reason was for shelter was for survival um architecture changes over the years you know from that basic caves that you see thousands of years later it goes into you know like for what, what you see in greece architecture um you know started being built for authority um and the, the language of design what sir was saying earlier the architectural language the design language keeps changing over time i mean i i know all there must be a lot of you who are game of thrones fans in here so when you see game of thrones you see all those wars and big castles and moats and crocodiles in the water and bridges that can collapse so they can protect themselves all that really um reflects what the kind of architecture in that area is so if you see the picture on the top right that's around the medieval times when supposedly game of thrones uh, you know you can you can picture all of that or later when people started building really big churches and temples and they do all of these things to get people to come back into religion so clearly architecture was was helping in one way or the other it was helping society some place you were able to talk to society through art and through architecture um you know many years later and and the term history actually um is is very very new it's probably 200 250 years old the term history as such before that trust me students did not have to go to schools and colleges and learn about history because there was no nothing called history there were no books they started printing books only 200 years ago and that's the only time you had access to people who went and dug around and found the acropolis sitting on top of the athens athens or they they found um, the pyramids of giza and they could record it so over time you know when they could record things and they start printing books and that goes around and as you know you have so as i was talking you have so many books now all possible because somebody invented a machine to print it and that obviously has its repercussions in architecture as well as you can see the eiffel tower on the right side next slide sir please so this language of um architecture keeps changing if you see the images on the on the left side those are buildings that are built in from 1960s to if you took the top left building it's yet to come in dubai um so the language of architecture keeps changing and and what this is essentially um is it talks about what society is how society lives at that point what if, if they if they dug out uh, dug out caves to you know live and survive or if they built these massive churches to want to go to church whatever whatever it may be architectural history was just is 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 absolutely understandable through the way people live in that particular point of time and that's why the subject becomes really important like uh, priyanka ma'am said earlier architectural design then becomes a culmination of all these subjects put together um especially history of architecture because it's very important for us to know our past to know where we are from to understand the way we are living now and to be able to design for the future and that's what we all aspire to do is to design for the future so history of architecture learning about it what our ancestors or or generations and and centuries before us how they lived to how we are living now as as you know things change in the blink of an eye like what we've been going through in the past couple of months um is going to change architecture for sure and many years later students like yourselves are going to learn about this time and how architecture changed um in this time because things like art and architecture were always used to talk to people it was always used as a visual medium as you all know when you look at something and when you learn something um you understand much better than when you are stuck to reading about it so architecture and art was always used for that and that's why we believe uh, uh, you know it's very important to efficiently uh, go through this this history of architecture make it fun make it very immersive so that you understand what our culture is and what society is to help you design for the future and so that uh, ends my short thing on history of architecture i think the next okay oh, yeah. Yes, fourth question for today. Ah, uh, it's about shapes. With the elements provided, choose the final shape possible from the given options. Your time starts now.
Okay, the right answer is option C. Option C is the right answer. Yes, ma'am, over to you. when we, you know about the history of architecture, the basic design, the constructions. So now, but the way you are going to represent it, definitely there are some subjects, there are some technology through that medium, you can learn how to depict it, that language which is there exactly in your head or in your mind. So here comes the subject which is called as architecture graphics. For that, I would request Grishma ma'am to talk about the graphics. Uh, hello everyone, I am Krishna Madan. I'm an assistant professor at BGSF. So today I'm speaking about what architectural graphics does. Okay, as a semester subject, how does it help you? So to brief you in one point, it is a language, it is a language we've used in architecture to communicate. Like you see, we, we architectural designers, what be, uh, building construction construction is, or a few other subjects. Now, put it to put it right onto the paper, you need a medium. And architectural graphics is that subject which will help you to put it right on a sheet of paper or to even put it in a uh, digital format. We teach you how to use the pencil right. Right now, you all are the untrained minds and eyes. So this subject will help you or help everyone, help all the untrained minds and eyes to visualize the space. So this is a subject that you will, you will be using to communicate. So not only to us as an architect, but this will, this subject will help you communicate both to the labor, uh, to the labors like masons and as well as your client like you have or like you're seeing on this uh, present slide there are pers perspectives what you can see so you you will be able to visualize which is the right angle or the right camera angle to show it to your client or show it to show it to your uh, uh, mason and to visualize the space for you for you also it's a best way to visualize space for yourself and do uh, alternative changes required in your particular design so like I said, this subject will help you understand line weights. So when you do, when you uh, go back to building construction to understand what line weights are, okay, and how does it help you communicate? This subject will give you a brief about all that and make you technically strong. So this subject is a horizontal and a vertical, it helps you horizontally and vertically integrate all other subjects together. Uh, this is about architectural graphics. And uh, over to Tejas Kareshwar uh, for com computer application. Hello once again. Um, um, computer application is something that uh, is a parallel uh, education that we have at BGSSAP. And uh, we take pride in uh, our students' work. Uh, what you're seeing right now is uh, present fourth semester's work. Uh, this is not any computer um, random internet image, but this is one of our students' work, which we are very proud to present. Um, we basically um, not just teach them what is necessary as a software to communicate uh, the drawings to maybe your clients or for presentations or to express your design, but also um, we develop an interest in uh, exploring a lot of other um, softwares like you know um, sketchup um, photoshop or um, even 3ds max or any animation softwares to uh, develop other skills of uh, presenting um, you know different concepts and ideas so so auto, i i would definitely say yes um, sketching and um, uh, working manually takes a huge role in uh, communicating ideas, but uh, softwares make um, the expression much easier. So here we present one of the walkthrough, which is of a professional standard and um, students are well-trained and well-equipped to um, face the world outside with their uh, skills.
question for today your time starts now Okay, so the correct answer is option C, number two. So the pattern that's being followed here is, if you look at the first figure, the first circle, five plus four, nine into two gives you 18. So similarly, 12 plus eight, 20 into three gives you 60. So similarly, you'll have to add, take the sum of the numbers at the bottom and multiply it into two, three, four, respectively. So the last fourth circle, we have to multiply the number into five. So what into five gives you 30, uh, respectively, you need to figure out the answer. So it's option C. Yes, thank you. Are, uh, the last uh, topic or a briefing about the study trip, the exhibition and the workshop which uh, we uh, do in throughout the semester or at the end of the semester. For this, again, I would request Hindu ma'am to talk about the study trip, the exhibition and workshop. Hindu ma'am. Hi, hi again, everyone. Um, study tours, I know the fun part, right? You can see all the images on the left and all the students sitting outside various buildings all over the country. Um, we organize a lot of study trips for every year, every batch, uh, uh, at least once or twice. Um, and they can be as far, I mean, we've, we've gone um, to the entire 2018 day trip to the north of India. We've, we've uh, been towards the south, towards all pretty much all the states in the south, um, and, as, and, and also to a specific place to study one particular um, place or a group of buildings or a community and things like that. So we are very specific about these, uh, these trips that we curate. The faculty is always there uh, with the, along with the students to help curate these particular trips because we very strongly believe that immersing oneself in an environment um, is, is an absolutely valuable method for learning that sort of uh, these direct experiences that you can get from visually um, seeing these buildings, from, from talking to the people who live there, um, to understanding cultures and communities. We believe that that direct um, experiences absolutely enrich the learning process. And so it, it need, there needs to be that, um, you know, sort of hands-on approach to studying the environment. Uh, so next slide, please. So not just do we, um, you know, curate the tours along with certain tour companies and uh, um, the students, um, with the faculty sits together and for each year we create a different kind of study. So for example, as you can see on the left side, we go to, um, uh, to just to study sort of dwellings from all over the south or, you know, a different kind of climate and, and architecture of Kerala, um, all the modern um, influenced uh, architecture that comes in Goa or even a long, rather long trip to many different parts of, of the country, starting from Bangalore. And we do this 
absolute only for architecture so we go there not just to study or not just to see the place and have a fun trip which is also there obviously as students everybody needs that experience as well but also to understand these buildings like i'd mentioned in earlier in uh, while i was talking to you about history you see them you see them in books you learn to sketch them but the minute you visually see and understand these places you are able to connect with it better you are able to understand those environments the culture the art and and the history of that region and uh, those buildings much better so we very specifically specifically curate these buildings very thought out each building that you go to each building that you will learn there is a massive take away from there um and we tend to curate our, all our trips based based on this idea um so that you learn maximum so next please next slide please uh so no, sorry previous slide so we don't um, exactly let these trips go um, you know just you go there and you see and you sit there and sketch and understand but we also come back and we hold an exhibition of what all you've learned from that place and all your parents are invited um a lot of other people from other colleges come come by to see them and a lot of our, our faculty are there and especially it becomes very interesting for the parents as well to come back and see um you know what they've studied when they go for this trip and come back so even if you know you've gone to see the taj mahal somebody would make something interesting out of out of that or you know you've come back and you visited all those houses and you come back and make models of those with proper drawings of those and that's that helps you really understand um and in our we have a large exhibition space where it, where we're able to host all of these um exhibitions that um after every semester um apart from our trips in india we have been uh, trying to curate um uh, trips to singapore spain and all of that um we we were supposed to uh, be going this time of the year but because of the pandemic we've had to put that on hold but yeah we had shortlisted singapore and spain as the two major places that we would have liked to actually go this year so hopefully next year that will be a reality and those trips are faculty led again it is curated um entirely to understand and learn architecture and the culture of the region and they are not just meant as um a fun trips to go see a place which is which is obviously very important but at the same time um learning and that learning through that immersive experience is something that uh, we value a lot thank you for this i would uh, request uh, dean sir to talk about the eligibility and the admission process these are the norms prescribed by council of architecture and the norms are which i am very sure the we are part of visheshwara technical university belgaum the government university so the the same norms are followed there we go with that next slide please i guess we have given a glimpse of the entire um, aspect of bgsap if you see the picture towards your left side the picture is blossoming out of uh, their institution in empowering you at the end of this journey and this journey will start after 5 years where where you are equipped with the council of architecture uh, license to practice as an architect but you should be well equipped you should be well trained you should be you should be made to dream bold you have uh, equipped yourself with all the skills required to lead your journey of profession more than 40 to 50 years so god willing that is what we at bgsap as a entire team of bgsap faculty members entire team of supporting staff management everyone um, wish our students to uh, take the lead thank you i would request dion sir to guide us once again i take the opportunity to thank the Uh, DQ Lab. I wish to thank all the students for the patient hearing. I wish to thank all the parents uh, who are keen in, in uh, knowing the details to help their wards. And I would wish take this opportunity to wish everyone a bright, uh, successful uh, future uh, exploration with architecture. We are all we are all here mainly because we all wish to undertake the journey in architecture. Architecture brought us all together. Thank you.
I would request Dion sir to guide us. I would uh, request Tejas sir to, I think, uh, look at the landing page and Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, is it? Hold on. Did we stop in between? No, we are done with it. We were requesting you to guide us further. All right, all right. So I had to restart my uh, laptop uh, okay. in between. So I, I, I don't know whether the, the live stream has got disconnected, but let me just check. Just one second. Yeah, because we had some questions, but I'm just uh, connecting again. I'm sorry about this no thing. Yeah, but but uh, yeah. So before I got disconnected, there were a couple of uh, questions that I managed to see earlier. Uh, so one of those questions. So firstly, I'm sorry. I I just got a little distracted, but. Uh, Thank you so much for the presentation. I know I missed the last part of it, but it was a very, very interesting presentation. And thank you to uh, Dr. Ajay Chandra and the, and the entire team. All right. It was very interesting. Now, um, in terms of the questions that uh, have been asked, um, so, so some of the students are asking regarding the transportation facility. Uh, do you all have transportation specifically from Whitefield? We are covering the entire city region. All the directions of the city we are covering, we have around five buses which cover the entire city. All the pickup points are available in, on our website. Very clearly, we have mentioned the vehicle detail as well as the routes, the pickup uh, uh, routes and as well as with the timing. So it's very clear. I'm sure we are covering Whitefield area, may not be uh, closer to what they aspire, but definitely we are covering the entire city. All right. It is exclusive transportation facility for architecture because it is a standalone school of architecture. Um, uh, the bus transportation facility is exclusively for school of architecture students only for BGSR. Okay. All right. All right. And uh, how about the, the the cutoffs that have been uh, that have been you know um, going on? Um, so going by last year's cutoffs, what is the kind of uh, expected rank uh, that students have been uh, that your college has faced specifically in uh, round one? See, from the right, from like I could see the best rank which has who has opted for beaches up is one thirty six in the yester years, it goes till 800. Okay, okay. In the CET okay. I'm talking about, CET. 136 student also have joined. It goes till the last rank can be up till 600 to 800. That uh, we cannot be very sure about the bandwidth. That is a kind of uh, students, you know, from we have got the first student 136 rank joining us. It goes till 800. All right, fantastic, fantastic. And uh, do you have any uh, idea about the Comet K uh, rank cutoff? See, Comet K from the last two years, they were conducting Comet K towards the fag end of the admission season. So we are not very clear about the Comet K scenario. All in right. fact, the institution is also thinking to come out of Comet K in the years to come, mainly because uh, these admission process of Comet K are conducted towards the fag end. Maybe this year we need to wait and watch. All right, all right. So um, the next set of questions is regarding the hostel facilities. All right. So uh, we know there's a very, very nice hostel that you'll have uh, for the students. Um, and I've seen that personally when I've come there and you've taken me all around the hostel. So I, I was able to see that firsthand and I know that's really good. Um, What's the kind of fees that you'll charge for the hostel? Just uh, to get Sir, uh, for the hostel, uh, we will explain it in detail, mainly because we have caterers who are maintaining five-star properties. 
the standards what we adopt in our hostel is to that we have apollo sinduri doing the catering we have vintage hospitality doing the catering we have outsourced it to a professional agency for that in that way our transportation is given to sam tours and travels our own buses sam tours and travel maintain the transportation facility for bgs the idea is uh, for example sam tours and travels maintain software companies like infosys and all we provide so we want to maintain that professionalism in whatever we do same way in hostel this includes five times special veg five times special non veg separate dining separate kitchen we have the five star caterers with us and it also includes laundry facility thri thrice in a week so students have to literally study only they are, they have to just reach the studio five minutes away that's it fully secured under cctv all security guards right in the entrance we have cctv camera so that is the, the high level surveillance monitoring system so that the parents and the students uh, literally feel they are in a very safe secured environment all right all right the hostel has the faculty members as wardens staying in the hostel the idea is they should feel at home they should feel that there is always more than the classroom our support system and most of the faculty members are available till evening and obviously in the wardens both ladies also separate and gents also separate they are there they are architects with the, along with them when they explore work at studio they have any exploration related queries the faculty is there more than willing to support them all right all right so uh, in total you'll have approval for how many seats 80 seats 80 seats and of these 80 seats how many are, are assigned to ct how many CD are assigned to 36 seats uh, with the ct okay. other than the uh, reservation it should be something around 28 seats in ct in comet k we have 24 seats uh, and obviously 20 seats with the management just one second so that is 80 seats in total of which the seats in ct ct all right 24 seats in comet k that makes Wait. it 60 okay 36 and 24 and then the okay. remaining 20 seats for management okay all right all right so um so 36 24 okay now in this 36 seats what percentage of these would come for uh, general merit in general it is something close to 27 28 you can take it 27 Okay, twenty-seven seats would be general merit, and the the other uh, are part of the government norms be... related reservations. All right, all right, all right. And uh, Comet K is about twenty-four. So in Comet K, is it all through general merit, or are there reservations over there? The Comet K fee structure government prescribes. So it is as per the allotment process. Students with respect to their rank, they opt for it. Various colleges. Hello. Okay. Yeah, I'm having some uh, <laughs> trouble with my internet. Very unstable internet connection. So I didn't hear you very clearly. Okay. Uh, What I was mentioning is um, the Comet K process is undertaken by Comet K. Uh, there is a group of uh, institutions under the umbrella of Comet K. They have a, a ranking process and all. of the students opt for the colleges so oh. these seats are directly with the authorities like kea for cet and comet k with the uh, the man private management uh, related uh, group of institutions which undertake comet k all right so um so the ct fees the ct seats what what would the fee be for about the ct seats approximately The CET fee structure is one point two lakhs, including CET. Okay, okay. So that's one point two lakhs for the people who are uh, asking about the fees. Uh, so the CET seats is about one point two lakhs a year, including uh, the CET fees and all other fees. Because you know, whole lot of facility, right, from sports to uh, workshops, yeah. all other things. So these are all institution specific things, uh, including your uh, what you call the, the security funds and all those stuff. True. True. Uh, yeah, but I mean, so this is just a you know we 
uh, kind of a ballpark estimate for people to understand not yeah, ballpark yeah. really a reasonable estimate for yeah. people to understand uh, so this the comet k fees would be approximately how much 2.5 lakhs 2.5 lakhs okay and uh, um, the management seat fees how how do you that is uh, with respect to see uh, as soon as the cet uh, the comet the nata ranks are out and um okay. uh, je paper 2 ranks are out definitely it is between a discussion with the management the students have to visit for the management seats they have to complete the application process submit their records it depends on a discussion then the institution takes a call all right all right fantastic so um few more questions now uh, aparna guruchandra is asking uh, the cut off for for round 1 in ct is approximately rank 800 yes that's correct uh, would that be general merit or uh, with all the uh, see uh, with respect to our past years experience see uh, a well informed students uh, in some of the years we our ranks are very cut off ranks in first is very high it all depends we cannot predict usually the students go with the engineering uh, college cut off i am sure dion sir knows all these aspects uh, yeah. more than exploring the architecture quality and architecture education students most of the time look at the engineering cut off and blindly follow there are uh, times when we have a cut off uh, to 400 in the first round the, we cannot be predicting it but i am very sure that good set of students right from 150 odd we i told you 136 have joined us previous year so like that we cannot be predicting but we can be very sure within 900 very rarest because some of the time the reservation category ranks are shown not as the gm so when you get the pdf documents out in the public domain look at the gm cut there you will get to know all the details it's all in the public domain ccp sure fantastic so so just just to clarify for everybody here now uh, when they release the ranks all right uh, everybody gets to choose their college of choice now it's very important that uh, you go through the college what the college has to provide and that's the reason we are organizing these talks so that you can really interact with the college first hand and understand this um what sir is saying don't blindly go by the you know last year's cut offs uh, use that as a as a guideline for you in the sense um you need to target the highest nata score you need to you already know your board marks so now to maximize your nata score uh, you need to put in effort over the next 3 4 weeks all right now the rank that you get has to you have to ensure that that rank is good enough for you to get into a college like this now if you get a rank of about 800 or less you have a a, a probability of getting into the school but to be on the safer side target a rank less than 300 400 500 you will yes. get the school for sure yes yes okay i will go one step along with dion sir most valuable uh, input he has given for all the students and parents uh, dq is doing such wonderful um, event by making the college to interact with you you are well informed you are lucky very few students i have seen most over the years many parents select their colleges without understanding they would not have visited the college they would not have gone through what the college stands for how the teaching learning process happen so in that way you are well informed your mentors your gurus are more than um, uh, more than willing to share all their details they have done first hand study scrutiny for you all they are inviting the right kind of institutions for you this is the right way please go through in detail and when you are a student please prepare for the best ranks Oh, you put in your hundred percent because, uh, uh, as far as I know, the NATA first NATA is happening uh, by August the end. So you give it a best shot, and aspire to get the maximum best rank within four hundred, five hundred. That is the best way. Yeah. All Thank good you. colleges, including ours, we require committed students who are who are passionate to become a, a, a focused architect who wants to do something good in their career. 
thank you thank you dr ajay chand that was very kind of you to mention that but uh, i i i do think that uh, you know uh, as a team management team we do think it is very important that schools get to uh, that students get to really know their school well you know uh, so thank you so much for recognizing that um right now uh, what you know the this couple of questions regarding the online classes yeah, uh, in general uh, you know how many days of online class is it every day or monday to friday monday to saturday how does that work currently for all the parents and students because i'm sure your gurus including dan sir knows all the process of architecture for you all architecture is a highly committed uh, discipline like medical you are married to this profession throughout your life Uh, there is no shortcut to be a perfect uh, professional or uh, we are in the pursuit of excellence so uh, don't worry about the time um, what I, i would say is around uh, 30 to 35 hours of uh, total committed work hour is required at a school like bgsm our faculty members are task masters uh, we have a de- intricate deliberate uh, attempts to discuss uh, the scheme before we roll out so there is a whole lot of thinking and planning before we conduct the classes in a week usually you have five days a week saturdays are meant for extra curricular exploration study uh, site visits everything and um, believe me most of students don't want to miss a single session during this lockdown period they miss the institution most of them have informed me through their parents through themselves because all faculties are connected online we don't want to be this 9 to 5 business we want to be throughout your journey of learning it has to be more uh, hand holding more more intricate world, way of uh, learning together exploring together so don't worry about the hours but i can say that uh, intense serious sessions with a lot of fun learning a lot of activities that is a way forward and bjsap if you know the field if you know any of the senior architecture students most of the vtu colleges uh, students are popular with bjsap notes their videos their uh, the sister the scheme of things so uh, the students in architecture quite know us in that way it's a intense school all right yeah so uh, i think to to just build up on what uh, dr ajay said um, he's he's been kind when he says 30 to 35 hours but uh, when he says you're married to this career it is way more than that i mean uh, but that will come to you naturally when you need to deliver you will spend the whole night working and you will deliver all right totally but totally. Uh, that's the passion you need for this and uh, ideally the passion you need for any career but uh, more so demanding by uh, architecture all right but it's not to scare you it is to tell you that you will automatically work that hard you know you will love this career i think it's something to love uh, and that's what you will you will uh, love and uh, bavika kv is asking whether the hostel facility is available for localites my understanding is yes yes uh, definitely available for localites um, shri shri aditi is asking about the hostel and college fee structure we co- we covered that a little while ago um, so but just just to repeat your uh your ct fees would be 1.2 lakhs a year your comit k fees would be 2.5 lakhs a year management seat fees is up to discussion and you will uh, have to meet the management and discuss with them with that hostel fees uh, would you have an indicator uh, yeah hostel, hostel fees i have already mentioned it is a fixed fee structure for all category student from ct or comit k or from management it is 1.3 lakhs including laundry okay and that is 1.3 lakhs per year per year per year. please okay. note okay. Uh, the uh, the regular hostel compared to our hostel we are in campus we have all the sports facilities to interactive zones um, wifi campus uh, i have told we are in the fringe of south bangalore uh, with our own campus we wanted the silent silent zone for a pursuit of architecture it is a architecture world out there um, with your faculty with your colleagues uh, working exploring architecture and your hostel is just 5 minutes it's a very safe environment under total surveillance 
we would uh, the, we would uh, make use of this opportunity to invite you all once the pandemic is over feel free to visit the campus before that you can explore all the uh, social media or website um, uh, feel free to discuss with your gurus uh, dion sir will be kind enough to give you all the details we will share the um, brochure with him please go through it and when you consider good schools of architecture please do consider bjs sap also we want committed good students trained by from dq fantastic i think uh, i think that's about it i think we've covered all the questions it was a beautiful webinar um, thanks to the entire team at bjs school of architecture planning uh, dr ajay chandran you have been uh, very kind Uh, to attend this and also along with your team it was nice to get an entire uh, understanding from the entire team uh, professor ct manjunath uh, professor indu professor sana professor tejas professor priyanka and professor grishma thank you so much for taking the time out to uh, being here thank you sir thank you i appreciate uh, the entire team of uh, dq labs to give us this valuable opportunity to uh, uh, interact with budding architects aspiring architects and their proud parents thank you sir thank you